I'm one of the luckiest guys in the world. I get to fly fish for a living. My name's Tim Rajeff, and this is the Airflow Story. Hi, I'm Richard Wothers, and at the age of 46, I'm classified as the old man at Airflow. I've been with Airflow for nearly 25 years now, and my job title is Production Director. That puts me in charge of all the manufacturing of lines, but also, more importantly, the development, the innovation, coming up with the new, new stuff. Airflow's a real tight-knit community, not just in the factory, but also with our distributors from around the world. Part of my role is to go and visit those guys and find the product that's best for their market. Come up with some crazy ideas and make some great fly lines that really suit those circumstances. One of the things I noticed about working with Gareth Jones and Rich Withers from Airflow is that they're really passionate about what they do. I've got the, there's a bigger one in there. No, that's about the right size. That's about the right size. Yeah. Something over for the... Yeah, something for that one. It's going to be too big. Yeah, I think so. That's the worst clear, huh? Look that one. Seagull shrimp. Red, ruby red shrimp. It's brought me several fish this week. I mean, everybody wants to catch more fish. We want to look cooler. We want to cast farther. And me, with my plastics background and my tournament casting competition background, we're a great mix. We love fishing. We want to make products that cast farther, that sink faster, and Airflow's materials allow us to do that. The factory is based in Brecon, which is on this beautiful River Usk, set in an amazing national park. And it always intrigues me that I head out from here, I look for developments in polymers, in additives, in manufacturing techniques, and then I bring it back to here to make fly lines, which are then sent all over the planet. What is a fly line? It's a, it's a length of plastic coated string it doesn't look much, but that's the most important bit of your fly fishing kit. The technology that goes into making a fly line is much more technical than any other bit of fly fishing equipment. Production technique has taken 25 years to develop and obviously it's highly secret. But from those early days of a single layer production, we have developed tremendously and now we're able to finally control three independent layers of polymer being put onto the fly line. The starting point of a fly line is obviously the core material and the bulk of our lines are, ma are made on the, the power core and if we're making a trout line, five weight, that's typically on a 15 pound core. If we're making something that is used for GT then that will go up to a 50 pound core. We have shells full of different breaking strains and different cores and this allows us to make fly lines for any fly fishing application. The base material that we make our fly lines from is polyurethane and, and we buy that in in pellet form. Depending on what application the line is going to be used in, we either start off with a, a softer grade material if it's used in cold conditions or a harder grade material if it's used in say tropics. It's naturally flexible. We don't need to add any plasticizers to it to make it flexible. So not only having to add plasticizers to it means that it's not going to harden with age. The plasticizers aren't going to leach out and end up with the line cracking, which makes airflow lines very resilient to, to DEET, to suntan cream, to UV light. So they're gonna be around a long time. In compounding, we can put levels of tungsten into the, the polymer, which allows the line to sink faster. And because polyurethane is so tough and so durable, it allows us to put real high levels of tungsten into the material. And we can even get 90% by weight of tungsten into the polymer. The, the software control is unique. It allows us to control minutely the amount of material that we're actually putting onto the fly line. So it allows us to make lines that other manufacturers can't make. The, the tolerance and accuracy that we've got means that we can make Scandi lines and Skagit lines down to 30 grain increments. Because polyurethane is a thermoplastic, it allowed me to develop line welding. And because of its toughness, we're able to weld in certain ways that 
pretty much make it indestructible. Initially, we started to make simple fold-over loops, um, but with time I've developed much tougher, more durable, hard-wearing loops that you see on the Skagit and the Scandi heads. The lines are made in a continuous process with a bump between one line and the next, and they're put on to, to large diameter drums to allow them to cure. And the curing process, depending on the material that we use, can be from three to five days. When the lines are cured, the spool is then placed onto our spooling station, and the line's spooled off through a laser so that we can identify the exact point where one line finishes and the next one begins. It then passes onto the spooler, which creates the coil that you see in your fly line box. At that point then, the coils are passed over to the, the QC area, where they're minutely checked for weight and buoyancy, surface finish, coloration. From the QC area, the, the coils get taken into our coil storage, where they're kept until demand comes through. And at that point, they're taken down into packing, put on the spools, put into boxes, labelled up, and then sent to fly fishermen all over the world. The proudest moment in my life, other than obviously my wife and kids, I think is seeing the ridgeline on display in the, the Science Museum in London. For those of you that don't know, a ridgeline has very fine ridges that run along the line in the direction you've cast. And what that does, it reduces the surface area that comes into contact with the rod rings. It reduces friction, makes the cast smooth, makes it go further, but it also doesn't make it noisy. Because the ridges are running in the direction of the cast, there's very little noise. Those lines that have the, the surface texture at 90 degrees to your cast, they produce a lot of noise, but also they produce areas where the dirt can get trapped and it's very difficult to clean. I think unique would be the word I would use to describe what we do. Nobody makes fly lines that we make fly lines. Nobody uses the materials that we use. And back when we started 25 years ago, the route that we took wasn't the easiest route, but we could see the potential. And now, 25 years down the road, we're making some good fly lines. I've been lucky enough to develop lines with some of the top fly fishermen from around the world. And I'm always looking for a specific reaction. And it doesn't matter what country they're from, what language they speak. If I nail it, if I get it really, really white, if I give them exactly what they want, you get that S and M moment. And that stands for the smile and nod. When I get the smile and nod, the S and M, I've got it nailed. <laughs>